look, let's look at the test and examples. The sequence, the, each one of the sequences corresponds to one of the simple VIs that I show you on the LabVIEW examples. So if we look at the first one for the uh, thermal chamber controller example, what it's going to do is going to open a sequence file and we get this welcome letter that uh, describes what's happening. Welcome to the Delacroix message handler test and thermal chamber controller example. This example executes uses, using no process model because there's not unit under test, so there's no need to enter a serial uh, number. And the sample contains a DQMH module that's a th thermal chamber controller that's written as a singleton. So you can see it's exactly the same thing that we had on this simple VI. And we're going to be doing the same thing, starting the module and then showing the panel, updating the set point, and then waiting until we reach the temperature. It's the same thing here. So if I uh, launch my uh, sequence and I go to LabVIEW, you see that the temperature chamber is running and is waiting until we get to 75, and then uh, the sequence is going to stop. One of the changes that we did in DQMH 4.0 was to respect the settings of your station. Uh, before we were changing the station model, now we do it at the sequence file. So if I, oh, let me, let's wait until this thing ends. So if I go to the, back to the sequence file and I go to sequence file properties, you can see that on the advanced, we have right now no model, which is what we wanted to do. All right, the second example, temperature chamber controller with a unit under test. For this one, we are going to uh, add a model. So same welcome letter, and it says that we're using the sequential process model file, and we have two modules, the thermal chamber controller uh, singleton and the device under, under test clonable. So if we do run this guy, now this time I do get to enter a serial number because I do have a unit under test. And same thing, we're going to have our temperature chamber. Now we're doing a little bit different. We're going to be getting to 75 and then uh, we're going to launch the unit under test as a singleton. And there we go, the unit under test comes here. Power on self-test, we're done. And now we are going to do it at uh, the new set point is minus 25. So these, it's a little bit more complete than the lab example. We are going to be doing different temperature ranges. So I invite you to, uh, I'm going to speed up the video and show the two different uh, sections so you can see the, the code. Now the new set point is 22. So room temperature, and we do our new test at room temperature. We get our result. In this case, it failed. We get our report. We also change the report to be HTML instead of XML. That way, if you upgrade to test and uh, 2016, you don't have any problems with uh, for your old the style sheets pointing to the old version of test and. So that was uh, another change we did. So if I close this and I go to edit file sequence file properties you'll see that instead of changing the model option on your station, we're only doing it for this particular sequence file and we're using the sequential model. Okay, let's look at the last one, which is the sequence with uh, multiple units under test. On the multiple units under test, We are calling the same thing, but now we are using for loops to run different uh, instances. In the case of test stand, we are going to be using the batch process model file. And in this case, we have the clonable, but we're not running it as a singleton. We are going to be running several uh, devices under test. So if I run that, and we're going to be doing the same thing about having um, different temperature sets. So I have now two different modules. And if I go to LabVIEW, again, we can have our temperature chamber. And as soon as it gets to 75, we're going to launch our two units under tests. There's one, and there's the other one. And because we're using the batch model, these two are running in parallel. And 
when they're done, we're going to go to minus 25. And again, I'm going to speed through the video so we can get to see as soon as it reaches the temperature, we'll get our two units under test launched. And finally, we go to room temperature. And now that we have reached room temperature, we run both units, we do their self-test, and we're done. We do our report, in this case, both of them passed. And uh, if I look at the VI, and we have our reports, like I said, now they are HTML. And if we look at the file itself, we see that we are running this as a batch model. So again, we're being respectful of your station. Uh, okay. Um, the other thing we did is on model options, we added the number of test sockets. That way, if you happen to have your station configured for something different, we didn't change the test sockets for your station. This is another change that we did in 4.0. Okay. So now for those of you that are uh, test done, you probably want to see a little bit more about how we are calling the code. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to do, do it with the, with the simple one so we can see what's going on. So we do some magic at the sequence, sequence load file. Uh, all we're doing is making sure that we put on the uh, search directories that we put at the bottom our directory for our examples. And, uh, and we make sure if you then go now and run on LabVIEW 2014, you will only have one row here. This is another change that we did for DK31, where we were before just having a bunch of uh, times our directory listed. Um, so we do that, we, we do the search directory, and then we do the, the welcome dialogue that you saw. So you can see that this VI is part of the support VI, and, uh, and those are the welcome dialogues. That's all part of the sequence uh, load. Then um, the configuring the module is doing the same things that we are doing on this simple VI. If you look at, let me put it over here, you can see start module, that's our friend over here. Uh, synchronize module events, our friend over here. Update heater state, that's our friend over here. Set point is the one over here. Update ramp rate is the one over here. And then our main sequence, we are basically doing the same thing that we are doing on the main, where we have this on a loop, except we let, uh, we do a do while here and we are doing show the show panel. So that's action show panel. That's these, my friend over here. And it's the update set point again, but now for our new settings for all the, for the set point of 75. And we do a do while, and what we are calling during the do while is a request and wait for status, which is the same BI that we are calling on the LabVIEW code. We hide the uh, controller panel, and then when we're done, we close the module. All right, so in our main sequence, this is another change we did on our examples. We're using a for each. So for each temperature set point, we are doing the uh, cold temperature, uh, hot, cold, and then room temperature. Uh, we set that up here. And then once we have configured what are the, the values that we want to use, then we show the panel, update the set point, and everything else that I showed you earlier. And then we close our controller, device under test, and the execution monitor, DQMH.